So hey everyone, I know that it was probably what most of you thought I was going to do, and you're absolutely right. My next truck is an F-350 Dually. So I know a lot of people thought that I would probably pick a Ram 3500 or an F350. And what I want to do now is quickly go through the differences between the two and what made me narrow my choice down to an F350 dually over a Ram because it was very, very close. I wasn't really considering GM trucks. I think they're beautiful trucks. I think they're very capable. But with the lack in payload capacity, towing capacity, no rear AC vents, and waxed frame, I really want to wait to see what GM's going to do with their next iteration of their truck. Anyways, back to the topic. So this is a truck I ended up getting. It's a 2017 F-350 Dually. It has a 410 rear axle. Gives this truck the highest payload capacity and the highest tow capacity of any 3500 or 350 series dually truck on the market if you get it similarly equipped with the crew cab long bed dually truck now one could argue that the ram laramie longhorn that you see here is the most equipped version of this truck that they make now this ram has the ice and transmission as well as the high output cummins engine now let's quickly go over some comparative numbers between this f350 and that ram 3500 truck the F-350 is going to have 440 horsepower versus the Ram's 385 horsepower. And this Ram is equipped with the high output Cummins engine and the ice and transmission. The 350 is going to have 925 pound-feet of torque versus the 900 pound-feet of torque with this Ram. Conventional towing on the 350 is going to be 21,000 pounds versus 17,080 pounds. Max gooseneck towing is 31,300 pounds versus 30,320 pounds. Turning radius on my truck is 57.8 feet versus 58 feet on the Ram. Now let's go through and talk about some of the other features that really sold me on the Ford. First of all, a really easy one is the mirrors. I think I've told you in several videos that I really like how the Ford mirrors have an electronic control that lets them telescope out as well as fold in. And the whole spot mirror below the main mirror is a very, very good setup for a pickup truck. And that's versus the Ram mirror, which has a good setup when it's flipped up, but when it's not in a towing position and it's down, is definitely not quite as convenient. It really throws your perspective off to have this mirror right here. And I believe that's the reason why a lot of people that own Ram trucks tend to have them flipped up when they're driving. Second one is the use of all LED lights for the front. Actually, every light on this new Super Duty is an LED light. The surround bar, both headlights, the high beam and low beam turn signal, as well as the fog lamps are all LED on the Ford. On the Ram, you get the LED strip below the light. It's a projector-style halogen light. High beam's also a halogen, and the fog lights are halogen. Now, a feature on the Ram that I do like is the fact it gives you front parking sensors. But you really don't need that on the F-350 because Ford puts a camera, along with a little sprayer to wash the camera, up here on the front of their truck. Both the Ford and the Ram come equipped with a high center mount camera which gives you a really good view of what's going on in the bed of your truck if you're going to be hitching up a fifth wheel or a gooseneck. But only Ford and General Motors give you 360 cameras. Well, not necessarily 360 camera in GM's case. They give you the ability to individually select the cameras around the truck, but Ford actually gives you that 360 degree view of the truck using these side mount cameras as well as the front and the rear camera. Believe it or not, even on their highest end Ram trucks, it's still optional to get a soft open or slow opening tailgate. The tailgate is assisted going up, so it doesn't feel that heavy, but if I pull the handle, it's gonna slam down. Whereas on the Ford, not only is it assisted, but it's actually remote controlled. The rear legroom on the Super Duty is also much more spacier and it's completely flat. You don't have any type of a hump here in the center. Whereas on the Laramie Longhorn here, you have a pretty good amount of space here in the center, but because the front cushions of the seat protrude out so far, it really impinges on your leg room. And this is in the normal seated position, so you have quite a bit less space here in the back seat. What is nice though is on the Ram, you actually have these really cool storage pockets that are hidden underneath, so you can put you know, equipment, supplies, things like that. But you do lose under seat storage, so you don't actually have any under seat storage here when the seat is down. 
If you want to achieve that same flat area back here, you have to flip these little platforms down and then it gives you kind of a flat surface back here as well, but it also elevates it kind of high. As far as interiors go, they're both very, very well appointed, very well designed interiors. The RAM is going to have a 8.4 inch Uconnect screen as far as infotainment system, which is really, really nice. It's actually a very good system. And I'd be torn between the two pieces of technology, whether it's Sync 3 or Uconnect, because they're both great systems. The RAM also has a slightly more functional center console area because it gives you a utility spot right here with all your connections, coin holders and such. And then below it, it gives you a relatively nice sized center console. This is one area that Ford definitely has a larger center console hole, but they don't really give you this nice little area for, uh, for things that you want to keep closer to you or easier to access. Also, as most people know, Ford has the option to include power retracting steps on the side. Very convenient, especially if you want them out of the way while you're driving for clearance and you want them lower than your traditional steps. These drop down about an inch lower than traditional step sides on the side of trucks, which is really nice because trucks are getting taller and taller and taller. Both trucks have 17 inch alloy wheels. The Ram truck uses Alcoa with a traditional bullet hole style. I actually think they're really good looking wheels and arguably better looking than what's on my Super Duty. Ford has been using this style of Alcoa wheel for a long time. It's not a bad looking wheel in any sense, but I think it looks a bit more plain than what you get on the Ram. So I'd have to give one up to the Ram for having a better looking wheel design than the 350 dually wheels. So to summarize the reasons why I went with the F-350 versus a Ram Laramie Longhorn 3500, greater towing capacity, greater payload, more technology features, better lighting, more cameras, better interior, more space. Those were the main reasons. I really liked the Ram. It was a close call. You know, when you hear one of those Rams start up and you hear that Cummins engine chugging, it has a really, really truck sound to it. It sounds like an incredibly capable truck, um, and it is an incredibly capable truck. They're both very, very solid vehicles. Both have E-coated, fully boxed frames front to rear. I would have to say though that the Ford has a significantly smoother ride on the road than the Ram does. One thing you'll notice about Ford is they're starting to introduce more of a rake to the back of the truck or the back lifting up slightly more than the front versus older 350s that pretty much sat perfectly level. And that's kind of reminiscent of what you've seen with Ram trucks as well as General Motor trucks. I'd have to say though that they're both beautifully appointed trucks. I did my research when I was looking at what my next truck was going to be. I really crunched all the numbers. I looked at the interior driving behaviors, engines, transmissions, tow capacities, payload. All of that really factored in. It was not an easy decision at the end of the day, but it was a clear decision. And the F-350 Dually King Ranch with the 410 rear axle is the route that I went. Anyways guys, I hope you continue following my channel. Please subscribe, like, and I'll see you next time.